My name is Selvagnin. I'm the author of Malignant Self-Love, Narcissism Revisited. This is the second part of a video which deals with the loaded question, Was Jesus Christ a malignant narcissist? In the first part, we surveyed his early childhood and his development into a guru at the center of a cult. The principles espoused by Jesus were, were malleable and easily bent. He professed to minister only to the Hebrews, to the sons of Israel, and steadfastly refused to heal the Gentiles, whom he called dogs. When a woman of Canaan beseeched him to cast the devil out of her daughter, and cried out, Have mercy on me, Jesus retorted, shockingly, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. It is not meet to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs, dogs being the woman and her daughter. Matthew 15, 24. But the minute she adores him, adulates him, compliments him, and provides him with narcissistic supply, on the spot, on the flip of a coin, he forgets all his principles and retracts his lofty ideals. When she adulates him, he says, Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew 15, 28. Our sincistic supply goes a long way with Jesus Christ. Similarly, Jesus cured the servant of a Roman centurion after his master catered to Jesus' by now rampant megalomania. When Jesus heard it, the centurion's praise, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. Matthew 8, 10 and 13. So, Jesus is above his own laws. He is the law, and he can change it at whim and will. Subject to narcissistic supply, the bribe that all narcissists accept gladly, he does it. Jesus' initial false modesty soon gives way to bragging and outlandish, often confabulatory, false claims. Whenever he effected a miracle, such as restoring eyesight to the blind, cleansing lepers, reviving the crippled, and raising the ostensibly dead, Jesus beseeches uh, the, the fortunate ones to keep mum about the events. An example... And their eyes were opened, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. Matthew 9.30. This is false modesty. Jesus actually wants praise for his actions, wants to be acknowledged. But by feigning modesty, he puts himself above the fray. He expects others to do his dirty job for him, to provide him with narcissistic supply, without him needing to beg for it, as he often does in the canonical Gospels, by the way. But Jesus was not averse to blatant self-promotion when his false modesty failed to elicit narcissistic supply. Consider the following uh, two examples. Go and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. In other words, go and spread the good news. Go and tell everyone about me. Get me some narcissistic supply. Another example. I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. That This is Jesus talking about himself. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Behold, a greater than the prophet Jonas is here. Behold, a greater than King Solomon is here. And, you know, he simply he, he, lose, he lost control over himself. He compares himself to every known um, edifice in Hebrew history, in Jewish history, and to every known great man. As a true narcissist, Jesus reprimanded others for his own brand of behavior. This psychological defense mechanism is known as projection. Let us study the way he describes the Pharisees, the scribes, and the Sadducees. And it is easy to discern that his attacks against these groups of Jewish priests 
actually describe himself perfectly and his own conduct. Here is what he has to say. They say and do not, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be borne and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They are interested only to be, to be seen. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. In other words, he accuses them of seeking narcissistic supply, which is exactly what he has been doing throughout the canonical Gospels. Narcissists are disruptive, counter-dependent, combative, resent authority. They are rebellious and contumacious. They feel that they are above the law, or rather that they are a law unto themselves. They hold themselves to be immune to the consequences of their own actions. Jesus says, Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. Matthew 10, 34. So much for Jesus' peacefulness. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Matthew 21, 12. Narcissists are ill-disposed towards disagreement and criticism. They react to the slightest hint of either with narcissistic rage and fury that knows no bounds and no mercy. When Jesus was ignored in Capernaum, a relatively large town at the time, he says, he cast a spell, he cast a curse on thousands of people. And he says, And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, that it should be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. Matthew 11:23. Hell hath no fury like a spurned narcissist. Jesus is clear cut. He that is not with me is against me. Matthew 12:30. This black and white thinking is known in psychology as splitting. It is a primitive defense mechanism which is characteristic of narcissistic personality disorder and other mental health problems. Jesus com continues, For I say unto you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. In other words, you don't want to praise me, you don't want to adore me, you don't want to adulate me, I'm out of here, I'm gone. Narcissists react particularly badly when their concocted personal myth, their false self, their narrative, is directly and effectively challenged and they are consequently discredited and humiliated in public. They cannot tolerate this. And here is an example. And when Jesus was come into his own country, he taught them in the synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters are not all with us? Whence then hath this man all these things? In other words, they, they berated him. They, they reduced him to size, to proportion. And they were offended in him. He was insulted. But Jesus, Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. He punished them. He did not heal. He did not cure. He did not preach. He punished them because they dared remember his origins, his childhood and, and adolescence. That was an enormous slight, an insult to this extreme pathological narcissist. Ultimately, the narcissist pays the price for years of ill-treating others and sucking their energies dry with constant demands for attention, adulation and affirmation. People get tired of the overbearing and overwhelming presence of the narcissist in their midst of his destructive and destabilizing influence, and of the pernicious effects he has on their nearest, dearest, and communities. Invariably, people seek to banish the narcissist and extricate themselves from his cult. The authorities usually are forced to intervene and lock the narcissist up, or worse, in the case of Jesus, crucify him. Even the closest supporters and followers and disciples of the narcissist 
give up on him. We have an example with Jesus. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Matthew 26, 56. Then did they spit in his face and buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is that smote thee? Smote thee? Matthew 26, 67. Peter remembered the word of Jesus, which said unto him, Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. And Peter indeed has uh, had denied uh, Jesus three times before the cock uh, crowed. Matthew 26, 75. And what about the, the people? Narcissists like to present themselves as popular heroes, heroes of the nation, heroes of the people. What about the mob? What about the multitude? What about the people? Did they love Jesus? We found out that they didn't. And the fickle multitude, the common folk, who were supposed to be the mainstay of Jesus' power and popularity, they also betrayed him, and they did so gleefully, and with a clear, clear sense of relief and good riddance. We read, Pontius Pilate addresses the, the public and says, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. They all say unto him, let him, Jesus, be crucified. They cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. They're actually begging Pilate to crucify Jesus. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildst it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and the elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. The thieves also, which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Matthew 27. Universally banished, hated, pilloried, and abandoned. Jesus pays the ultimate price for his mental disorder, pathological, malignant, Narcissism.